Hi guys, welcome to my uh, first video on integral calculus. I'm going to be going over section 5.5 of the James Stewart Essential Calculus Early Transcendentals book. And um, if you want to follow along, these problems are taken straight from the practice problems. I will be doing every problem for every section of the book. Um, you'll, you'll find those under videos that are labeled extra homework for whatever it is, 5.5. And that would be any, any problems that aren't covered in my original video. Okay, so without any further ado, let's just jump right into it. Um, let me see first if I can use this pencil. I'd rather use this pencil than anything. You know, let me just uh, draw a little happy face. Can you see that? No, you can barely see that. Aww. aww. Okay, well, that, that rolls out my thick pencil. Um, okay, so we're going to start it off with an easy problem. Uh, the integral of cosine 3x times dx. And basically here what I'm going to introduce to you is my own little method of using what I call a u-substitution table. Or, or a, uh, yeah, that's what I usually call it, a u-substitution table. I don't know where I got it from, if I made it up or, or if anything. I really, I've never seen any teacher do it before, and most teachers don't teach it this way, but it's the way that makes most sense. So I'm going to show you guys how to do this. Okay, so what you do is you first set up your du table, or, you know, you first set up your du, your, D, your u, your du, and your dx, okay? And what you want to do here is you're trying to simplify the integral, so what way can we, what, what u variable can we substitute into it to make it an easier inter, integral? Well, right here, right off the bat, off the bat, off the bot, <laughs> at, right off the bat, um, we have cosine of 3x, and it's the integral of that. So what we're going to do is we're going to say u is equal to 3x, all right? And then once we, once we figure out what variable we want to use, we're going to first take this down to the next step, which is cosine of u, okay, times dx. And then we're going to figure out what, what is du. Well, du is simply the, the um, differentiation of, of 3 times x. So what's going to happen here is, you know, x to the power of 0, so it's going to be 3. Am I correct? If you don't know how to do differentiation, I will have videos on that, and you can review those so you remember how to differentiate. So basically what I did here is I got the du of 3x, and that is 3. Now I'm going to get the dx. The dx is simply... Um, Imaginary, imagine, you have to imagine that this is not even, this is, this is all in terms of u, up right here. This is u, and this is in terms of x, this is in terms of du, this is in terms of dx. So it's basically 3 times dx. You always have to remember that the differentiation of this, you're running your differentiation in terms of x, it's a dx. So you have a, a 3 times dx, really. And then um, what you want to do is you, solve, you want to solve in terms of um, dx. So what you want to do here is... Um, divide both sides by 3, you know, 3's cancel out. So what you have here is, you know, uh, 1 third times du, or, you know, the way I have there, du over 3. And then what, what, what occurs here is uh, we, we then have to take this next, this next part of the problem down to another step. So it's going to be cosine of u times the d of u, because now remember we're putting everything in terms of u, okay? So in this case, you know, um, we're substituting the dx, which is here, for this dx. So now everything's in terms of u, okay? So you have everything in terms of du. Now, right off the bat, we know that this is a constant because it's multiplying that and multiplying that. So it's, it's, it's definitely a constant that we can just pull out right to the front. So we're going to rewrite this as one-third integral of cosine u times du. So everything's in terms of u. So now we want to integrate the cosine of u. And the integration of cosine of u is going to be um, sine of u. Okay, it's positive. Integration of cosine is always positive. Integration of sine is always negative. Remember that. Um, so then, you know, it's basically going to be one-third times sine of u. And since we already completed the in integration, we have to put, you know, plus c. Because it's not a definite integral. This is an indefinite integral. If it was a definite integral, we'd have numbers and do a whole bunch of other stuff. But this is an indefinite integral, so we have to make sure the plus c is there. I had a professor that removed five points once because I forgot a plus c. Five points out of a, I forget what question was. I think it was a 10 or 15 point question. I was upset. So this is a particularly hard integration. So remember the plus c, okay? So... Um, it's important later on, you'll know why, to not make little mistakes like that. But remember the plus c if it's an indefinite integral. Okay, so then once we've completed the integration, what we have to do is now substitute the u 
back in for this u. So we have sine of, oops, why did I do that? Sine of 3x over 3 plus c. And that is your final answer. And that is how you do a u substitution on an indefinite integral. Let's go over a quickly uh, another, another problem here. Um, let's go over, uh, I don't know, uh, problem number three. Problem number three is an integral of x to the squared. And this is, I'm going to show you how u substitution is going to be easy. With, it makes things a lot easier with problems like this. Um, you know what, let me get a piece of paper. Um, okay, so we have uh, problem three which is integration of x squared times um, the root of 3x plus 1. Okay, so when we're trying to figure out what, what, do we, what we want to substitute in, uh, we have the u here, uh, we want to look at what is outside. We don't, want to, we don't want to substitute this because we know the differentiation of this is 2x. Now we differentiate what's inside here. Oh, there's my clock. My clock always goes off during these videos. I have no idea why. But, um, okay, so when we differentiate this, we know that we're going to end up with an x squared. So we're going to say, okay, you know, this, is, this might lead us somewhere. So let's, let's see what happens when we, when we uh, substitute u for x to the third plus 1. Okay, so we differentiate straight off the bat. Um, we finish our table, okay? And when we finish our table, it's going to be 3x squared. And then it's going to be 1 over 3x squared. So that's times dx and it's going to be times du. So what happens here is you know, we have the x squared times the radical of uh, u, and we times it by 3x squared. These cancel out. We can pull out this, this remaining one-third right here, I don't know if you see it, pull that right out in front of the integral, and then we just have to integrate um, root of 2. Uh, which, remember the du's and all that, if you want to. I mean, it's so intuitive now that I don't even need to see that because I just know what needs to happen. But, you know, when you, when you first start off, you should, uh, you should, you know, get the feel for things and, uh, try to, try to keep it as, uh, three, I think, yeah. Try and keep it as neat and organized as you can. My math gets really ugly really fast. Pretty much everything in mine gets really ugly really fast. So I have no idea why. Um, I'm just simplifying the bases here. And then we want to substitute u back into it. So we're going to put 2 times x third plus 1 to the 3 um, over the 9 plus c. And that right there is going to be my final answer. Now, if you're a little confused of how to, how to integrate uh, a root function like that, what you want to do is basically you want to rewrite u as 1 over 2, right? It's the same, same as saying um, this. Am I correct? So basically because this, this is a 1 over 2 right here, we can easily convert ourselves back and forth here. And then you know how to integrate is all you do is you add 1 to it. And then you, you take the same thing and you put it on the bottom and you add 1 to it. So what is uh, 1 half plus 1? Well, 1, we convert that into 1 half plus 2, um, like that. And uh, then we end up with, you know, our power, which is 3 over 2. So, and that's what we have on the bottom, which is when we have this, which is 3 over 2 on the bottom, but since we have a fraction on the bottom, we just invert the fraction and we end up with what we have here, which is that over 3. I don't know if you were able to see that. Let me see. So then when you do that, that's how I basically ended up with this, and that's how I ended up with this, and then I just used substituted everything back into each other, and we're good. Okay, so that's, that's problem 3. Um, let's do another problem. Uh, problem 7 looks really good. Problem 7 looks great. Let's do problem 7. It looks a little complicated, and I want to get as many of these hard-looking problems out of here, out of the way, as soon as possible. So we can, uh, you know, further your knowledge of how to tackle these harder um, problems, and you'll be able to have a reference for how to do that. Okay, so here we have, again, we're going to set up our table. 
straight off the bat. And what we have here again, we can see intuitively that when we differentiate x to the to the second power, we were, we're gonna we can uh, eliminate this space here because remember when we finish our tables throughout this entire thing, we're gonna ultimately end up with you know one over two x. And you can see that fast enough the more problems you do like this. So here we have you know x squared plus three, and then you know we're gonna differentiate differentiate it right off the bot off the bat off the bot. I keep saying that I don't know why. So we two x. And then, you know, that's times dx. Oh, man, paper moved. Bad handwriting. Anyways, and it's going to end up with 2x times dx. Remember, we substitute the dx's into each other, so it's going to end up being 2x um, times u to the fourth times dx. Whoops. Times that because remember we're substituting in, times du. Two x's, guess what, they, they cancel out. Then you just have the integral of, and then it's u to the fourth times one times du, so it's gonna be u to the fourth times du, which means the integral of that is going to be um, u to the fifth plus u to the five, or yeah, u to the five, um, that plus c. And then we substitute that in and what, what do we get is uh, we get the, we substitute the u's back in. Remember the u's up here, x squared plus 3. We substitute the u's back in. We get x squared plus 3 to the power of 5 over 5 plus c. And that is my answer right there. Okay, um, now we got another, another weird looking problem right out of the way. These, the, the, the main thing is, you know, integral calculus is really not hard at all. But you have these ugly looking things and uh, you don't know how to kill them, you know? So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, keep doing as many problems as I can. You know, you can stop the video and stop watching whenever. Um, I'm pretty sure you already got the hang of this by now. And you should be well on your way to uh, getting an A in your class, <laughs> hopefully. Again, leave any questions in the comment boxes below and all that. And I'll hopefully get back to you as soon as possible. Okay, so here we have a little bit, we need to know a little bit of the ln rules, okay? We want to substitute u for the u for the ln because that's that's the only thing we really can substitute. I mean, we can pull out this 1x and then we can substitute the 1x and then that's going to just get weird because then that's just increase this and the, we, we don't want to increase the the integral we want to decrease the integral we don't want to keep adding things to it so you know it seems counterintuitive to get the the one over the x and, and substitute that in so we're going to say okay let's and, and pretty much anything to a power that's the one thing that you should look at when you're when you're looking to substitute in so here we have u to equals lx we differentiate it, it becomes one x if you know that rule ln of x when you integrate it's one x when you integrate it it's back to ln of, ln of x um, and then we, diff we, uh, we, set we solve for dx, and then we, uh, we're going to now do this integral. So we have to rewrite the integral in terms of u. Um, well, I call them in terms of u. I don't know the proper terminology. I'm just a know-nothing college student. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, we substitute the dx in. And, you know, the x is straight up cancel out. I know I made them bigger. Okay, they cancel out. And we're gonna ha we're gonna be left with the integral of u to the second. Look how easy this got. Look how quick this got. And then uh, it's gonna end up being u to the third over three plus c. There's no definite integral here. It's an indefinite integral. If there was a definite integral, there'd be a variable here and a variable here, but there's not. So it's an indefinite integral. So I'm gonna get u of th u of th u to the power of three over three plus c. And we're, then we're then we're gonna get ln of x to the third power over three plus c, because we're just substituting everything back in. And that is the answer. And one more really quick problem, because this one also, I don't know why this used to confuse me, it was dumb mistakes I do. But uh, here we have sine pi times t. Actually, you know, I'm, I'm just going to leave this for the extra homework video, because I'm running out of time. So uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I hope you guys have a great day. And uh, leave any questions for me in the comment section below. And I will get back to you as soon as possible. So thanks for joining me. Have a good one.